Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to the channel. With the introduction of Seeker into the Rogue Company character pool, there's been a lot of questions raised as to who is the best Intel Rogue. Is it Talon, is it Dallas, or is it the new Rogue Seeker? In this video, I'm going to answer that question. If you do go on to enjoy the video, or you just want to see daily, educational, Rogue Company content, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. But for now, let's get into it. <laughs> So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to actually go beyond just Dallas, Talent and Seeker and talk about two other rogues who I think can pass as Intel rogues if you play them right. That is also going to include Phantom and Glitch. My goal is to assess their value as an Intel rogue, not just as their strength as a rogue in general, but as an Intel rogue, how easy they are to use, how good they are actually providing information and their different roles within that Intel rogue playstyle. We're going to start off with Dallas, who is the OG traditional rogue who is purposely built for intel within this game. The aspect of Dallas that makes him an intel rogue is obviously his main ability target finder, which means he snaps someone and that reveals the closest person to him. The reveal lasts about four to five seconds and can reveal absolutely anybody in the game other than Lancer using her ability, which makes her immune to reveals. The only soft counter to this ability is gonna be cloaked, which reduces its reveal time by half, as it does with all other reveals that we talk about here in this video. So what is Dallas used for as an Intel Rogue? Well, the fact that he can only snap one person at a time is pretty important and valuable. Whereas some of these other Rogues we're gonna talk about can reveal multiple people in a group, Dallas specifically finds one person and reveals them. That means that if they run away and somebody else on the enemy team moves closer to you, you may get fooled into thinking that they are still your closest target, where it may not be the case. Also, depending on where you snap, you may get someone who is closer to you, but not necessarily your most immediate threat. Generally though, Dallas' ability is very, very good. Having a reveal for that long that highlights specifically one person means you can play for that pick very, very easily. And his kit completely revolves around this as well. He has an incendiary grenade to flush somebody out of a position and two of the best weapons in the game if you are consistent with your shots. The Devotion is a two-tap gun with one to the head and one to the body being able to finish off any target at close range and that closest range is still pretty decent compared to some other weapons. And the HRM is also a beamer. It just got a buff, in fact, to reduce its vertical recoil. So it's even stronger now. Then for Dallas, you bring this passive as well, which is recharge, which means when he gets a down, he gains his ability back. And that is really what it makes Dallas Dallas. You snap, get a kill, get your ability back, and then you can move from target to target to target, isolating one person at a time every single time. This is really strong. It helps you tear through an entire team. Dallas is what I would call Snowball Rogue. So if you get one down, you're able to get another one, then another one, then another one pretty consistently. Similar to rogues who have Life Drain, who can gain health back, then they can move to the next target. Dallas does this purely by intel and information, and that makes him such a great rogue for someone who's confident in their gunplay. And then the final thing that I really like doing with Dallas, and one of the things that makes his kit so good with this reveal, is playing him as an almost flanker. Not every single round, because that becomes too obvious, but every once in a while, go for a flank, go to one of the far edges of the map by padded steps so you can move silently while walking and then snap. You'll find your closest person to you. And generally that closest person is off watching an angle. You'll know where they are. You can use that incendiary grenade to push them off a position and get that kill and then continue quickly accelerating through the team by gaining additional recharges of your ability. This is a particular place that I love doing with Dallas and one of the things that makes him so strong in my eyes is the fact that his reveal can be so good for so many different purposes. To sort of summarize Dallas as an intel rogue, he is primarily used for finding and picking off a target one at a time. Now we're going to move on to Talon who is another intel rogue within the game. His form of intel is slightly different though. Talon is all about throwing around his radar dart and using his passive mag gloves which helps him reclaim items from range to grab the dart back and throw it to another location. This means that Talon is really good at sweeping different locations and moving through positions because he can consistently move that dart and put it in different locations. Talon's dart though is slightly different than Dallas's reveal. Whereas Dallas's reveal highlights people in red so you can see them, Talon's dart makes them appear on the minimap. That is a different type of reveal and not countered by cloak. The dart has a 20 meter radius, so from its center, it can reveal enemies in a 20 meter radius circle around it, including going through walls and revealing things through walls. This is a really good ability at just helping you move through location to location and check those corners that might be too risky to check otherwise. The fact that Talon has mag gloves as well to mean that he can safely reclaim that dart and throw it somewhere else to check more corners is a really, really good ability and what helps makes him so strong when you're trying to use him in this Intel playstyle. Other things that make Talon really good that synergize well with his kit is the fact that he has a flashbang and a C4, which are great at clearing corners when you have found somebody on that dart. He also has padded steps, which means very similar to Dallas, 
he can be used in this flanking playstyle. The one d d deficit he has compared to someone like Dallas when using a flanking playstyle is that when you're trying to sweep corners with your dart, it does make an audible noise when it lands on a location and when you try and reclaim it using mag gloves. So enemies who are aware will probably know you're coming based off the sort of the audio they hear from that dart and from that reclaim. Talon's kit though when it comes to his weapons is actually really good. He has a DMR, the Deadeye, which can benefit really well at long range. And again, is a two tap to the head, which is slightly worse than the Devotion. And in my opinion, not as good of a gun, but it's still viable at those longer range. But more importantly, he has the LMPX, which is the best close and available at long range uh, SMG. The LMPX fully upgraded is an absolute beamer at long range, but it can also be used at close and medium range as well fairly consistently, and that is what is really good and adaptable at Talon. He also has life drain and tenacity, which gives him a bit of survivability and snowball potential, which means he's just, as a rogue, very, very good and comfortable at sort of being in fights. I tend to find that Talon is actually better on the defender side of the map. I think just having a solid area permanently revealed on the minimap for you, so you know whoever's going there, is really great when you're in a defensive situation. It means you can put it down on the other site and maybe watch the site yourself. Or very simply, just keep it near you so you know who's about to push you and use that C4 without exposing yourself to any big risks. Therefore, if I was summarizing Talon's playstyle, I would say he is a defensive intel position holding kind of intel rogue. Now we're going to get onto the new rogue Seeker. Seeker shoots a bow and arrow that bounces off multiple surfaces and can bend around corners, allowing him to reveal anybody within a 7.5 meter radius of that flight path. This is a really good ability, essentially because it can reveal the entire enemy team based off a longer area. Rather than Talon Dite, which is located specifically around one area, the bow and arrow can be bounced in a way that makes it go for a really long while and reveal a lot of people in that area. So many times I've seen it where I've been able to reveal an entire team, and that has given me and my team massive information to be confident to go for a push or sink a piece of utility somewhere to try and get a pick. And that is kind of how I see Seeker being played in his Intel Rogue playstyle, is this informational, we're about to push, let's get some final information, maybe throw a bounce grenade, do extra damage with it because of his passive, and then push off of that kill. He's an aggressive pushing type of intel rogue rather than someone like a Talon who I think is a bit more defensive in that playstyle. He also has sticky sensors to benefit from that reveal playstyle, and these are absolutely phenomenal pieces of equipment. Essentially what these are is you throw them down, it's like a trip mine, except instead of doing damage when someone walks over it, it simply reveals them and permanently reveals them while they're standing in this radius. This is really good at covering your flank or flushing people out of position or at least figure out where people are. It also slightly works through walls, so it can be pretty good if you put it on the other side of a thin wall to an opponent. In his kit alone, he has fantastic pieces of intel that can cover a really large radius of an area. Whether you throw your sticky sensors, say on B site, mid, and then you sit on A, that means you've got great coverage of the entire map and you can use your dart to figure out who's on A as well. It means essentially Seeker is great at having possibility to reveal everybody on the map across the entire map. And that is something that is so beneficial when you're looking for an Intel Rogue. Not to mention he has two fantastic guns in the Sahara and the Aaron, which are absolute beamers and very easy to use. The Aaron may be less so because it is a first person scoped weapon as opposed to the usual third person perspective weapons we're used to. But the Sahara by itself is an absolute beamer, arguably one of the best weapons in the game in my opinion if you're consistent with your shots and can control that recoil. But again, very similar to the HRM, it's a beamer and it is definitely worth picking up and you can win loads of fights with it if you're good with it. To summarize then Seeker, I would say he is an aggressive pushing, get that final piece of information, get that pick kind of intel rogue that you want if you're trying to coordinate an aggressive push with your team. Now though, they're not traditional intel rogues, but I want to quickly give an eye to Phantom and Glitch and talk about how I think they perform as intel rogues. When it comes to Phantom, we're talking about her with the nightshade and using sticky sensors and tracker rounds rather than the sniper necessarily. In this sort of playstyle, I think Phantom is really good. I think the Nightshade is a phenomenal weapon and similar to Seeker, she has those sticky sensors which can be used to guard your flank or other locations around the map with great accuracy for intel. You then pair her with having a great weapon and track arounds as well because the Nightshade doesn't do a lot of damage per hit unlike something like the HRM or Sahara which will down people really quickly, but you have the track arounds which means every bullet you put into somebody gives your team further information and yourself further information. It means you can blast through smoke and she also has life drain meaning when she does get in these fights she's a great skirmish rogue as well, kind of similar to Talon in that sense. Then we talk about her main ability which is obviously nano smoke and this particularly can be good as it acts like a smoke grenade, but when enemies are inside it, it reveals them. This is great, similar to a sticky sensor that can't be shot. You throw it down on a corner that you think someone might be, and it reveals them so you can push them confidently. It can also be just used to guard your flank, similar to another smoke grenade, and if enemies do walk through it, you have that reveal there. You then tag them up with your shots, and that is fantastic as well. 
As an Intel Rogue, I think Phantom is pretty viable if you use her aggressively with the team, using those sticky sensors to guard an angle and using the tracker rounds to help give them initial information as you continue to push an objective. This is the other Rogue that I slightly want to touch on as an Intel playstyle. I do not think him as a Breacher is particularly useful right now, but I've always talked about using him as this flanking Intel Rogue. The reason he can do this is because his main ability, Hack, can be pulled out and you can see anybody within a 20 meter radius of you. On the minimap, you'll see that little blue circle and those are people that you can see within that area. They come up on your little uh, device so you can see their names and you know exactly what's around you. This means that if you really slowly and methodically work through a position and you're very aware and have good map awareness, you'll be able to figure out exactly where people are. You can then use your flashbang or semtex to flush them out of that position and get a free kill. He also has padded steps, which means that he can move around silently. And if you didn't know, when you pull out your device, you walk, not run, which means padded steps silences those footsteps while you have your device out. For good map aware players, Glitch can perform a flanking role really well. He's similar to Talon in the sense that he has the LMPX and he has a shotgun as well with the flashbangs to accompany that. He also has quite great survivability having headstrong tenacity and has track arounds for additional reveal purposes as well. Generally though, the distinction I want to put between Glitch and Talon is that Talon is better at sort of covering a larger areas because he can reclaim that dart throw somewhere else, whereas Glitch is literally just defined to a 20 meter radius of himself. Essentially, Glitch is the dart that Talon would want to throw. Glitch's then role as a Intel Rogue is a off the side flank, flush people out of position, kind of similar to how I talked about Dallas on the flank, but Glitch can do it all silently because he doesn't have to snap and he doesn't have to throw his dart like Talon would. So that's what the three plus two Intel Rogues do. I'm now going to rate them from best to worst for you. In the fifth place position, the one who I would say is the least useful as an Intel Rogue is probably going to be Glitch. Whilst it is his preferred play style, he still doesn't live up to this, and this is probably why Glitch is so weak. He's great on the flank on certain maps if you're very map aware and you can figure out exactly where people are based on when they pop up on your dart. But if you can't, he's not really that useful for you. He doesn't have any of the features that make him very Intel focused. In the fourth position, it's going to be Phantom. I think she has great potential as an Intel rogue. I think her sticky sensors are one of the best pieces of equipment in the game, especially in demolition and comp level stuff. I think her track arounds with the nightshade is pretty useful for your team to get into additional information as well with that nano smoke being fairly good too. However, I don't think she lives up to some of the more traditional Intel rogues that we have in this game, who I'm gonna rate now. In third place, I'm gonna give it to Talon. I think Talon is really good at providing great information for you and your team, but especially with the nerf to the mini map where it got bigger, making that reveal radius look smaller. It's actually not smaller, it's the exact same reveal radius, but it looks smaller. And the fact you can't see your mini map now when you're aimed down sight, whilst it isn't a massive issue, it is a small nerf. I just don't think Talon performs as well as an Intel Rogue. I think he's great at guarding a position. I think he's great on this defensive thing. But a lot of the time when you're using Intel, you're probably wanting it a bit more aggressive. And with Talon, he just doesn't fulfill that as well as the other two rogues on this list. Coming in second then is going to be Dallas as the second best Intel Rogue within Rogue Company right now. His snap is phenomenal. And getting that pick is so useful for his team. I absolutely love Dallas and his weapons. He is kind of limited by the fact that you have to be really good with his weapons to make him viable because you have to get that pick. When you get that pick, you can then start rolling through the team by using that recharge, getting the down, getting another use of your ability and continue to move through the team. But if you can't get that down or they run away or you snap and they're nowhere near you, sure, you've got information and it's great for Intel, but you don't fulfill the full role of Dallas. I think he's slightly too hard to be the best Intel rogue within the game. There's a little bit of RNG thrown in there too. That means the best Intel Rogue in the game, in my opinion, is going to be this new Rogue Seeker. I think that bow with a 30 second recharge rate, which I imagine is going to be nerfed to 45 seconds, is great at revealing loads of people in the game. You can basically reveal the entire team and you can do it multiple times in the game for great information. Not to mention it does damage and you can kill someone with it if you get the right angle on that headshot. I think the sticky sensors accompanied with him are so great as well and it's such an underrated but so valuable piece of equipment that I think you should be using. And that all together and the fact that he's more of an aggressive sort of Intel Rogue similar to Dallas is what's putting him on this top spot, especially with the fact that his weapons are likely slightly more easy to use compared to that of Dallas. Okay then guys, it's gonna take us to the end of the video and I wanna know what you think down in the comments below. If you did enjoy though, Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also come follow me on twitch.tv slash radthargaming to see live gameplay commentaries, guides, Q&As, and playing with viewers. All the links you're going to need are down in the description below, but for now, I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless, and I'll catch you in the next video.